Hello my friends, welcome back to another yoga class. We are wrapping up our philosophy series here on YouTube with our final Niyama which is Ishwara Pranidhana and that basically translates to surrendering to a higher power. Now this could mean different things to different people, it could be the universe, it could be God, it could be higher source and energy of feeling. Um, but it basically means letting go of control, uh, letting all of your fruits of your actions, all you do in this world, be dedicated and devoted to this energy. And I think there's a beautiful thing where we let go of self and we give you know, our energy to a collective consciousness. There's a great amount of freedom that comes with that and joy and connection. And so today's class, we're going to be focusing on quite a few forward folds, a lot of opening of the hands, as well as a little bit of chanting towards the end, which I'm really excited about. We're going to get started in a Balasana child's pose. So let's make our way down there. And you'll slide the knees together, send the hips back over your heels. Reach the arms forward, but try to turn your palms up towards the sky. This is you know, quite an external rotation of the shoulders, so if you need to, you can bring the palms down. But we're aiming to bring our palms up, almost as a way to offer and to be of service. And sometimes we can, we, we can be quite self-centered in terms of when we go through life, we ask, what's in it for me? What can I get out of this situation? And the more that we focus on giving, letting go of the self, letting go of needing to be rewarded for actions, the more joy we feel, the more peace we experience, the more understanding we have of how the greater universe works. And it's something that we've talked about a little bit during the series, non-attachment vaidagya, which is such an important part of our yoga experience. When we detach ourselves from the, not the consequences, but the results of our actions and focus rather on the journey and the actions themselves, we are often rewarded in quite unusual and beautiful ways. So can we really try ground here? Feeling the forehead drop down towards the earth. Feeling the palms turn up towards the sky. Take about three more deep breaths here. And then maybe just walking yourself up a little bit. We're going to thread the right hand through towards the left. Dropping the right shoulder towards the ground. Keeping the left hand reaching out in front. If you needed to, you could lift yourself up a little bit more to make this feel more comfortable. Otherwise, keeping the hips down towards the heels. Another option is to bring the left hand onto the right palm. And use this as a way to push the left shoulder back a bit more. And then when you're ready, coming back through center, 
just swapping the arms out so threading the left hand towards the right right hand wherever it feels comfortable Taking one more breath to completely release. Yourself back. Find your way into a seated position, Vajrasana. We're gonna bring the back of the palms down onto the thighs and again, feeling the palms open to the sky. Breathing into the space of giving and letting go. And we might start to take a couple of head circles here. So bringing the right ear down to the right shoulder and curling the chin towards the chest and bringing the left ear to the left shoulder and then just circling around again and take one more breath here And then coming back through center, we'll fold it back into our child's pose. Option this time to clasp the hands together behind the back. Breathe in as you thread the heart space through towards the front of the mat. Draw the shoulders back. And then as you exhale, lower the forehead down to the ground. Reach the knuckles up towards the sky and even try bringing them over your head. There's a, there's a chicken on the loose, so if I have to cut... Um, this video up a little bit is because he's come to say hi but he gets awfully close so I feel like he's going to come and bite my toes or something like that <laughs> let's try one more breath here oh, he's wandering off that's good <laughs> Let's release the hands, reach the arms back forward again, lift yourself up, breathe in and then as you exhale let's come down onto the belly to find our sphinx pose. Elbows come underneath, the shoulders they can always come out a little bit more. Try press the palms down into the ground, a little tuck of the tailbone here so the belly button lifts away from the ground. Shoulders pull back, that means it's a little bit more active. We can have our palms facing down or you can have your palms facing up as well. Trying to breathe deeply here into the diaphragm, the ribs and the chest, rather than the neck or above. And then as you exhale, feeling the shoulders retract a little bit more. And you could stay here if you felt like a little bit more. You could press the palms down. Keep the squeeze of the glutes as you lift maybe your elbows up into an extended cobra pose. You could stay here if you felt like you had more space. You can walk yourself back, but make sure it's in a position that you feel comfortable with. No pinching of the spine. And then as you breathe in, can you peel your heart open a little bit more? As you exhale, if you're in your cobra, just bend the elbows, look over your left shoulder. Breathe in, come back through center. And then as you exhale, bend the elbows, look over your right. Breathe in to come back. And then as you exhale, roll yourself down. We're going to press up onto the knees, then tuck onto the toes, lift the hips up and back, downward facing duck. Maybe you pedal out to your feet here, lowering one heel down. I think he just did a poop. 
<laughs> I think it just pooped at the back of my mat. Wow, that's great. <laughs> at least it's not actually on the mat. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I know looking between my feet, I can. <laughs> A little shift from side to side. Universe works in, in weird, strange ways. You make friends with chickens, it's great. <laughs> Pressing through the hands, lengthening the spine. And then when you're ready, you're going to walk your hands back towards your feet. Uttanasana, forward fold. You could just have your arms dangling down. You could bend one knee, bend the other knee. Another option that I'll give is our um, hands underneath our feet. So walking your fingertips as far back as you can, maybe meet the toes meet the wrist crease. If you are taking this option, press down into your hands, tuck the chin in and try to bend your elbows towards the outside of the mat. This is technically an inversion where the heart is above the head. And these are great ways to be able to shift our perspective a little bit more. Be able to see the world from a different angle. Great to include in your kind of day-to-day -day practice here. Take one more breath. Just stepping your hands out if they were under you. Walk your feet out to the edges of your mat. Turn the toes out a little bit. Bend the knees. Malasana, garland pose. Maybe the hands come towards the heart center as you press your knees out. A little squeeze of the glutes. Feeling the shoulders retract back heart space pulling forward. And this is quite a significant asana because within uh, Hinduism, a lot of the deities, a lot of the gods and the goddesses are seen with garlands. So it is um, known to be a very significant um, material item for higher powers. You could stay with your hands in heart center or you could extend your arms out as well. And see what happens if you close down the eyes here. And one more option that I'll provide is rather than being lifted Maybe it feels nice to kind of walk yourself forward and reach your fingertips forward. It does mean that you need to engage your glutes more and peel the knees back a little bit, pressing through the outsides of the feet. You could stay here, you could walk to one side of your mat, reaching out your fingertips. Yeah, maybe walk to the other side of the mat. And you could stay here or you come back through center, keep folding forward. But you're gonna try scoop your kind of armpits around the front of the shin. And then maybe the hands reach behind towards the hips. Using this kind of pull of the shins to draw the heart space forward a little bit more using the bow of the head as a way to kind of dedicate this practice to something beyond yourself. Let's take two more breaths wherever we are. This can be quite a lot for the hips, so if you need to at any point just release, we're actually going to 
unwind and kind of open through our hips a bit more. So land the knees down. Start to rise yourself so you're kneeling on the shins. Little squeeze of the glutes. We're going to find our Ustrasana now. We haven't done a huge amount of opening, so we'll probably just um, take the first variation here with the hands behind the hips. You can have your hands facing out or down or up, just whatever feels good and supported in your wrists today. Squeeze the glute, tuck the tailbone under, breathe in, try lift up tall. And then as you exhale, opening the heart, squeezing the elbows back towards each other. You could stay here if you did feel like you could go a little bit further. You could bring one hand towards the heel, maybe the other hand high or maybe two hands towards the heel. Just make sure you're in a place that you can breathe and be still in. Take one more breath here. And then slowly starting to unwind. I'm going to come down onto our hips. Extend your left leg out front. Right foot is going to come towards the inner of the leg. We're finding our Mari Chasana. It's a forward bend with quite a deep hip compression. And we're going to be using the same kind of um, arm wrap as we just did in our Malasana if you gave that a try. Just think about drawing your left toes back. You can start by just walking your hands forward. So the foot's on the outside of your left thigh. And you could stay here. You could try wander your hands around. The aim is to try to get the shoulder in front of the shin. And if you can get that, you might bend the right elbow. And then the left hand might meet the right towards the right hip. Maybe you bring your eye gaze towards your left toes so you have something to focus on and keep your attention present with. Take one more breath here. And then walk yourself back. We'll just take a little twist towards the right. So you might hug onto the front of the right shin as you turn around towards your leg. You could even take your left elbow around the outside of the right thigh. If you felt like a full bind here, if you felt warm enough to do so, thinking about lifting your belly button up and over as much as you can. The left elbow is going to bend arm is going to wrap around the front of the shin again and then your right hand comes behind towards the left foot. It's quite an active um, bind here. And then let's start to unwind. So we're going to try that on the other side. Right foot forward, left foot comes in towards the hips. Right toes draw back, breathe in, lift tall. And then as you exhale, walk on the inside of your left leg. Hands might reach forward or you might scoop the left hand around towards the left hip. Right hand might come to meet it and you might be somewhere in between and that's totally okay. Keep trying to travel your heart space forward towards your knee. Taking deep breaths into the back of your ribs, back of the heart. starting to unwind we're going to twist to the other side keep the foot where it is breathe in lift tall and then as you exhale twisting to the left left fingertips come behind
And then when you're ready, we'll come back through center. We'll find our way into our Sukhasana easy pose. This is a cross-legged position and feel free to find a pillow or a block or something to sit your hips up on so you feel comfortable in this seat. And what we're going to do is finish our practice with chanting Om. Now you've probably all heard this but I'll give a little explanation about what it is, what it means. So Om is actually broken down into four parts. You got the A, you got the U, you got the M and then you have what's called the silence part or the vibration afterwards and I think that's such an important aspect of this um, this mantra because it is ever present even when no sound might be coming out of your mouth the vibration is still there and it is a chant to find that collective consciousness to connect with the higher truth higher power within ourselves and beyond i will set the pitch for the first one or two rounds and then you can join in in your own time um. Um. times. Maybe just keeping your hands by your side. Or maybe bringing the hands through heart center. And as you go forth into the rest of your day, see how you can let go and surrender. Take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, let's bow our heads in honor of this practice of yoga. I thank you so much for being here. It was such a pleasure. And I think the last two months for our philosophy series was a really great way to kind of reflect on the new year and to kind of set up the new year.
If you've got any questions, let me know. If you wanted to see some longer videos, check out our Patreon account down below. And if you wanted to support me in creating these videos, this is a great way that you you can do that so I can keep producing videos for YouTube for free. Anyway, I will see you next time. Namaste. Oh no. We have a chicken on the loose. <laughs> oh my gosh, don't pick me. Hello, you're beautiful. Oh my word. Hello. Oh, that was so funny.